Uh, thank you so much, Michal. Yeah, that was very, uh, very funny if you think about it. How, uh, how it's possible that uh, a, a bulb can <laughs> become so much valuable, but bubbles have uh, have happened throughout history, and tulip bulbs are one part of that story. Uh, let's take a look at uh, our markets today. Uh, we can start with the euro dollar, I would say. Now, euro, of course, uh, a tremendous fall of 200 pips through the interest rate decision and uh, a bit of a fall through the NFP, but that fall didn't break, actually break the euro interest rate bottom, right? We, uh, we respected that. that actually went to the 886, and although the fall was still a, a good 120 pips, uh, it actually seems like a, a small move, of course, compared to the Thursday fall. So what we have now, if you connect those tops and bottoms, very simply put, a, a potential triangle here, uh, like this. And uh, basically, a break to the downside will be with the trend. A break to the upside will be counter trend. A break could happen to the upside, but it would be counter trend. And if we do move up, then obviously we would bump into resistance. The target right in here, the target right in here, all of that lines up with this previous top. So shorts of that area would make a lot of sense if price were to go that high, because that that's you know, a place where we could logically expect resistance, and uh, where you have such a confluence, uh, then um, trading becomes a lot more uh, simple, right? And also uh, a lot more statistical, safer to trade. I don't think we'll get to the minus 618. That seems pretty uh, pretty deep to me. I would say minus 272 is probably 135 all we can get before we could fall to 131.50, which 131.50 would be still an area where we could expect support because that's this bottom right in here. It's a, it's a four hour bottom, but it's also, in fact, a daily and weekly bottom. So we could see maybe a small upside and a fall to test that bottom or immediate fall. Other than that, I would say we still have to be careful because we are getting into a zone where we could see maybe a bounce, let's face it, one time or another. Definitely the dollar is looking very strong, but uh, that strength will roll out and uh, eventually correct itself. So we'll see when it happens. Now if the uh, correction here, of course, goes slow, like a bear flag, we can just keep, you know, keep expecting this to fall, right? Who knows how far it can go? But we do have to be aware of 131 and the 127.50 areas that they're very strong support. So as long as we don't go short right in front of those areas, everything should be fine. Other than that, it's just clearly a, uh, a downtrend. One thing we should note, though, is that this spike up was pretty aggressive. So that's why I wouldn't be surprised if we still get to the minus 272 as a, uh, as a three-wave correction. For those of you who like it, it's a... Uh, potential ABC, right? We like edit waves. So in any case, that set aside, that's what I'm waiting for. If you look at the weekly otherwise, last week was a bearish candle as well. Let me get rid of the indicators here. Last week was a bearish candle as well, so I wouldn't expect necessarily a break of last week's high as well, but that's at 135.50. Uh, the moving averages are 34 EMAs. All right, so all righty, I wrote it in the chat there. Let's see, anything to add? Not really, I think. I think that if we do see, I would really be more cautious for a way to, uh, to, to wait for a break of this line because we could still see a small push and bounce. If it does something like that, maybe even worth selling right in here. But of course, the break is, uh, you, you know, the, break is the confirmation. 
But if it does push and hit this trend line and we see something like this happen, maybe a sell right in here as an anticipation of the break could already make sense. But I would like to see that downside motion because at the moment, in fact, all we see here is, uh, is an upside and uh, maybe a small bull flag like this. So that is why another reason why this upside break could happen. I think that's it for my side. Let's take a look at uh, pound dollar. So the euro definitely on our watch list for that bearishness and continuation of that bearishness. Um, pound dollar similar. Apparently it broke actually this hour. Didn't I was uh, trying to find our PowerPoint, but I didn't see that break. Um, that could be very bearish. We did hit the 618. I was I was contemplating we could go all the way out back up to the 786, like this. But it doesn't look like we're happy. That it doesn't look like that like that is happening. In fact, um, 618 of course itself is a very very deep retracement already. Although with the pound, I know that it likes these 786 and 886s. So I was anticipating it can go there, but uh, doesn't look so with the break of this trend line. There's just a small space until the bottom. That bottom is still important, 158.90. Not only is it a weekly support, it's actually right in here. It's a daily uh, bottom as well, as you can see. So that's still an important level. We could fall to that level. And most likely if you fall to it, I think the chance of breaking through it, maybe after a small bump up, is high. So fall to it, probably a small hiccup, and then I think the chances of breaking through it then the day after are pretty high. We can continue to lower ground. Now that we've broken this trend line, that, those chances are decent, but um, obviously you wouldn't want to go short right in front of 158.90, which is that bottom. You never know. It could still move up from 158.90 all the way to 786. You never know. But there is still some space to uh, 158.90. It's now at 159.50. So any move up would be a good short now at the moment. Let me take a look. This is the 15 minute world. Yeah, I think that uh, trying to establish where a short entry could be interesting. We got space to about 50 pips, but obviously if we if we short here, then the stop loss is quite exposed potentially to, for example, uh, either here or here. The, the higher one is a pretty big stop loss. So I think any hook back. to 159.60, maybe with a stop loss just above 159.72 here, could make sense. That would be 15 pips only. Let me take a look at the five minute world. Pretty early break, in fact, prior to Europe. Okay, this candle, this one hour candle is going to actually close in one minute, right? So last hours or this hours high is around 159.72.
So I actually probably any square up of this one-hour candle with the stop loss above. It's a bit risky that stop loss, you know, above the the hourly high. Obviously, the 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 stop loss above the um, the one-hour high is is safer, but uh, it would entail a lot more pips than uh, than the hourly high, obviously. Let me take a look at the camera on a pivot point. To see if there's any confluence for a pending order. Uh, let's see. There's an L4 short breakout indeed. So at 159.54, let's take a look where the target is, at 159.30. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Once again, this is the pound dollar, for those of you who may, may have joined later or we're looking at their own charts, we're looking at the cable. Basically, we're looking at uh, a break of this one hour trend line and that support level as an indication that uh, this could fall at least some pips down to uh, 159 to test the bigger bottom. Okay. The, the target is just basically uh, at this moment it's just the it's just the natural support on the daily chart. If you look at the daily chart <clears throat> Then uh, let's zoom in a bit like this. Then we can see there's a support here and a support here on the daily chart. Basically, because we're breaking this trend line, that would be the next natural support that we bump into. So basically, what you're what you know what you as traders we as traders want to do is when we break a potential support of resistance, what is actually the next support of resistance? major support resistance in a way. I mean, there'll be a lot of support resistances on, on all time, a lot of time frames. And if you look at all of them, of course, then there will be, there will never be any space to trade, but uh, the next major one, and that would be kind of, then you have an idea what kind of space there is left. So that's, I don't think it makes sense to sell it here personally. But I don't. For me, it's not a good enough reward to risk. But uh, if it were to go up a bit higher, I think I might even put a pending order there. I'd, let me put a fib on this last five move, move down. Let me take a look where the fifty fib is. One fifty nine fifty. <clears throat> I'll try pending order there personally at that 50 fib of this small smaller move down obviously the break here this hook back would have been perfect but wasn't looking at that or we were not looking at it together first of all so I think that you know looking at this has definitely some potential now, pound dollar is definitely uh, a bit um, risky in the morning to trade it. Also, I, let's take a look at the calendar. Is there any pound news? I didn't look actually. Ah, there is. Hmm. Uh, then let's, I would say move on because CPI one hour 25 minutes from now, that's not worth it. There's uh, still plenty of time during this day for, for catching trades. And uh, it's uh, not worth it. Yeah, there is news on a pound dollar.
No, no. So we have to wait for that. Let's take a look at something else. Otherwise, the, otherwise, let's see a whole list of news, in fact. All PPI, pound, a lot of them in here. I think tomorrow Brunaki is speaking, if I remember correctly. But the problem is with the news event is that the pound dollar could just be retracing for one and a half hours like this. And then the news event depends, is it the spike up, is it the spike down? That's 50-50, yeah, so. Uh, the Aussie. <clears throat> Aussie is reaching the 92.80. That's important because the 98.280 is a weekly support level. It's a monthly low. If we break through that, this is looking very bearish. Uh, I would expect a bounce above this level. Either a bear flag, we would continue, or maybe a more impulsive spike up. Well, then maybe we're correcting higher. One of the two, something like this, as I've drawn on the chart. <clears throat> so I'll give you a minute to take a look if you're multitasking. Something like this. If it's a bear flag, obviously, the break of that monthly support or weekly fractal is, is becoming very high. I wouldn't expect a break immediately though. I mean the chances of that are very, very low because any any major support like that usually gets respected. The market normally doesn't break through a major level like that in one shot without hesitating or pausing or stalling. Just that that just doesn't it's not how the uh, psychology of uh, of the market is uh, is working. This is the odd uh, USD. You still have your pound? Oh. Oh, thanks for that. <clears throat> One second, folks. Sorry about that. I don't know what went wrong. Um, okay, there it is. Uh, Richard was saying uh, 159.65, by the way, for the pound dollar, which makes sense indeed. But the 618 fib, I think, of that last down move. So what I wanted to say with the odd USD was that uh, we are getting back to this this weekly support here. That's what I was talking about. Last month's low, basically, and this weekly support level. And uh, any move towards here, although we could fall a bit on the lower time frames. Uh, you know, you can see, you could expect a bounce. We could either see something like a bear flag, well then a break of that level is going to be high, or uh, a move up and then a correction higher, or a continuation to 99 is possible. But a break of that level, of this support, you know, just one straight fall, it could happen, I'm not saying, but the chances of that uh, without any stall or pause is just very small because the uh, the market usually doesn't uh, work that way. This is definitely in the downtrend though. Let's take a look at the 15 minute chart. There was a good break in Asian session here. Ninety-two eighty would be any target, but uh, yeah, there could be maybe a break here. But this is quite extended already. Uh, personally, I think that this was a good break here, but we have divergence now between these bottoms. There's always now there's a pretty decent probability of a small break, but then a correction up higher. So that small break is really not 
really worth trading. Anyone who wants uh, the fractal indicator, uh, and I know Praven wants it, go, just go to insert indicators and go to Bill Williams. Insert indicators and go to Bill Williams and then click on fractals. Already. So let's take a look at, yeah, maybe the Dalian. Dalian was is really moving a lot, as expected. For those of you who follow my Elite Wave charts, there was a big, big, big green arrow right when we got this bounce here, um, before all of this happened. So if you saw that and uh, you bought there, you doing very well, and up uh, almost 200 pips. So I hope someone caught that trade, because that was a very... Very, very nice bounce there. Um, for those of you who follow my other wave charts, small promotion. <laughs> but we are breaking a daily triangle. All right, we are breaking this daily triangle. So that does confirm the bullishness we were expecting ever since really here. And it, it, of course, it's taking slow. It takes slow to build and turn around. But uh, it is breaking out. One level still left, 10060, and the 100 level. Those are close resistances close by. But when we broke that, we could really, really have a potential for this to go a lot higher. Now, I'm not saying that all the resistance, resistance is out of the way. We still have this top, of course. But the likelihood of it really going up to 110 is, is increasing by the minute. And knowing the dollar yen, which doesn't make big retraces when it really starts to trend, like uh, it did a year ago at the beginning of this year, that if if the if the analysis is correct, it it really should be boost. I mean, it should now really be continuing with small breaks, small bear, pull flags, like this. You have one hour pull flag, but they shouldn't go deep, like three eighty two, two three six. Because all of this is wave threes now and wave fours, and we shouldn't see any deep pullbacks anymore, like we've, what we've had here, relatively deeper pullbacks. Especially if we break 10060. We just had a, a break of that recently, in fact about one and a half hours ago, two hours ago. But this was very small. This was a bit bigger, like this one. Let me take a look at the year odd, because for me, at the moment, I would need at least something like this, again, to, to be interested. always waiting for that chart pattern or pullback so that I know that the, the next move is a sustainable break with a lot of momentum left and I'm not just catching the last few pips before it goes into a bull flag. Let's see, maybe the euro odd is a bit different. Um, your odd made a huge spike down, but in fact has been moving up ever since, funny enough. Kind of wacky. Pushed through the bottom, but pushed with a massive wick. And is now moving up, in fact. So, trend is up. Let's take a look if there's any trade to upside on the 15-minute world.
Looks pretty bullish, in fact. Looks like we're actually breaking out of this consolidation or, or this small bull flag, which makes it appealing to trade, in fact. We've had that here, too. kind of had a break here then we had a pretty sturdy pullback and are now bouncing again obviously this upside it's quite extended already on a one-hour chart, but let's move 300 pips. That's the disadvantage of it. Breaks in here, especially this one was a lot better, even this one. Uh, now we have divergence on the 15, double divergence on the 15, makes it definitely riskier. If not triple divergence. It's only the 15 minute chart, but still. If it were not the divergence, I would definitely buy it here. And put a stop loss here for a, for a continuation because this is just a, a pullback after the breakout, most likely. But um, with the divergence, it's it's less sure. That's the problem. Well, it's reacting to my words. I wanted to buy it right in here. I was thinking really here, but I hesitated with taking it due to the divergence. This is looking like an impulse and bull flag on the one-minute chart, but it's, I mean, that's a very small chart pattern. Uh, well, yeah, I guess I'm too hesitant still because of the divergence in general, but it does look like a breakout. But there's some wick here. It's not a fluid breaker, that's for sure. I don't know. Let me take a look at something else because I'm clearly a bit hesitant on it, even though it's breaking out. So um, maybe this this one is a bit better. Now looking at the Euro New Zealand. Same thing, basically. 50-minute world, uptrend. Yeah, looks looks like we broke out nicely here, in fact. Here, too, could be a continuation. 
would mean a lot, would mean some euro strength. In fact, if we look at the euro odd and euro New Zealand, euro pound is moving up. It's kind of the same situation as the euro odd, though. Trying to see if if there's a a place that makes sense to to enter. Well, the five minute is really stuck in this in this downside. So I'm not. I don't think that this top will break necessarily immediately. I would be would be. Would, I mean, it's possible, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit of a the hook back before we break. In fact, definitely looking bullish, and I wouldn't be surprised if we break these tops. This itself is looking like a some kind of a correction that could be broken to the upside. So in that regard, if it were to hook back maybe to 162.60 ish, maybe make it inverse head and shoulders like this, that could be a good buy. Now it could break right now. I'm not saying, but looks like it's pushing. But then again, I've seen it. I've seen it a million, a million of times. A price that it looks like it's pushing it, and all of a sudden fly back there, and then find support like this. So let's see. It does look bullish, though. For the moment, I'll put an entry order at uh, 16060, though. You see? Already a reaction to it. Even small levels like this don't get an immediate break, right? Even if you're looking at a five-minute chart. I know it's just a five-minute resistance for some you might be laughing <laughs> because it's such a small time frame, maybe smaller than you're ever used to. Maybe some of you only look at the five or look a lot at the five minute and it's not funny to you, but or it's it's like what you think it's justified. But definitely support and resistance uh, you know has its effects on all time frames. It's just of course the effect is different. So I think an entry order in this case makes could make sense. It's a small risk. I would just put the stop loss just below here at 52, 51. It's about 10 pips. So if just I would take it as a small, small trade. Is there any news? Don't risk too much if you follow me. Uh, it's just a small probe to see if we can get a uh, continuation. It's always your decision, right? We don't have much um, Euro news, though. Got a rejection here. As I said, it looks like a lot of momentum, but how many times have we not seen a level like that just get that rejection, right? Millions of times. So I'll put an entry order of 162.61. And a stop loss at 152. 162.50. No, I go to 162.62 and 
and I'll go aim for a very modest target of 162.90. Yes. All right. Uh, does anyone have a favorite, something they would like to see? I think for me, the, oh, the euro yen maybe, yeah? Let's take a look at that. Well, if you have any favorites, let me know. In the meantime, I'll take a look at the euro yen. Euro yen got the continuation from downside um, from this resistance. I think we talked about it, but not sure. In any case, broke. And kind of like the, the euro odd, it's kind of closing and reversing almost to the upside. And now, if you look at this one hour chart, definitely an uptrend. Here, too, we had a lot of breaks here and here, too. Euro strength on Friday and Monday, basically, relatively. This, too, though, not interesting at the moment because. We're tr I mean, this is just a continuous impulse as, as you know, it just keeps on moving as it is, and it's right at this resistance. So, as I said, as a tip that I would always give is look for corrections like this to trade with the break of the impulse. And make sure that resistance is not too close by. If you do that, you've got very safe trading, right? If you start buying in here, it's very risky because, first of all, uh, we don't have a chart pattern like this. That means that the currency has paused sufficiently, or even here, although it's smaller. But we just broke out and uh, continued already, which means that what is the chances of follow through right in front of resistance like that? After we've had three breakouts like that already, well, obviously the chances, uh, you know. Obviously, the chances that, uh, that that happen is just very small. Makes sense, right? If it doesn't, and this is new to you, then I, I definitely encourage you to to take a look at it. Take a look, take at any chart, take at any one hour or 15 minute world, and just look at how the currency moves and the impulses and corrections, and how it would be how you can trade it if you just wait for the correction like that. So for me, the euro yen is very simple. Therefore, it's not interested. It is moving up, but not interested right in there. Am I, you, some of you might wonder, are you interested in a short? No, because for me, this is a, an upside momentum. I don't want to short against it. But it is true that if you wanted to short it anywhere, <clears throat> that it could be right in here, where the stop loss is above here. I wouldn't, personally, I don't look out for these trades. I wouldn't say, I'm not a reversal trader, but, you know, those are, that is an area where it can make sense with this relatively short stop loss. And it is over, it is pushed, it has pushed away from the moving averages quite a, a decent bit. So even if it moves back to here, you got some pips. But I'm not interested in trading that. But you know, from I'm trying to think out of the box or think differently than I would normally, and uh, think a bit more contrarian than I would normally maybe. And yeah, it, it could make sense. But then again, it could easily push, you know, it could easily push ten more pips, and you can get a better selling price. <clears throat> That could happen too. This is the five minute world. We can easily make a small move here and then find support, move up again, get another divergence, double divergence on this five minute chart, then maybe move down further. It's falling as we speak, but as I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be that that place where we said, you know, five pips ago, that that is necessary to turn next month. Uh, personally, that's just an idea. Uh, you can also take a look at 
you know, the one hour chart to see how this candle finishes. Is there a wick on top? If yes, that could be maybe some resistance. And um, maybe uh, maybe we see next hour small upside and then a weakness. But it has the yen in, first of all, and I expect a lot of bullishness on the yen. The euro, euro seems also relatively in an uptrend compared to your odd and your New Zealand at least. So I'll be cautious with, but it's just you know, me sharing some some ideas, that's all. Personally, I would rather wait for a correction back to this band and take the take the break up. Or if we break this, obviously if we break the resistance, then I wait and get a hook back, then I'll also be interested in the lungs. This is the Kiwi, one hour chart, and I will take a look at gold. Anyone else have some, some preference maybe? Maybe pound, pound yen, does anyone look at pound yen? Uh, the Kiwi, let's see. Kiwi is looking like a bearish turn in fact. The only thing is, we're right at support, right? Potential support right in here. Um, I mean, the fact that we we got rejected here is pretty bearish because this is looking like a small head and shoulders or a funky looking head and shoulders. We also broke out of this uh, support trend line, indicating that that upside was is toast. So there's a lot of bearish things to to expect from the Kiwi at the moment. But the only thing is, we're right at support. What can we do? We have to be patient. Here too, either a contrarian idea can emerge that that you're using the support as a potential, but I don't think that bouncing, the bouncing potential doesn't have much space. I think, but you never know. I could be totally wrong on that, and we could bounce like never ever seen <laughs> before in history. But uh, I think the chances somehow seem limited for that. Um, but going short is a no-no for sure. Not in here, because that's too close to to to, to support. The only thing that technically could be possible is a reversal trade to the upside, if if you like such trades. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not a fa big fan of it, but personally. But um, or to wait for a bigger hook back, maybe for example, let me take a look at. Let me put a fib on this first correction. A hook back to this minus 618 at 82.65, for example, or even even 82.52, but that's yeah, that's cl relatively close by. So that's what I mean with you know little potential. These, this, these levels could be already resistance. And we could see maybe a, a descending triangle and continuation. Oh, wow. It's activated, that's for sure. And I think it went through my stop loss, in fact. Yikes, that was a fast one. Um, well, I expected a bit more bounce off of, maybe I put it a bit too tight. Let me take a look. Well, yeah, what can you do? It uh, it went through the 50-minute fractal. There's not much we can do about it. It could have, could have been maybe a, a few pips looser, but then even then, it went through it with uh, by three and a half pips. Nothing, nothing to do really. Nothing you can do about that. That's just that's why I said take it small because it's just it is a risky trade. It's trying to get a bounce before a break within a consolidation. What I should have maybe could have maybe done is uh, even then it would have been at least a five pip um, lower, and I don't think I would have done that.
Well, Arn, I wanted to show you the setup. I forgot about that, so it's a good identity, in fact. <laughs> that was a risky one. And it has everything to do with, with this already being an uptrend pretty uh, pretty long, just like the euro odd. Right? You can see this is uh, making kind of an expanding wedge. There is divergence. And that's why I hesitated so long here because because of those factors. Euro New Zealand said looked a bit different to me, so I thought it was worth a smaller risk, but uh, we have to realize that these are uh, there's divergence and that's why they're riskier. You know, we're just a bit unlucky. These these breaks are happening or these breaks are happening at a point that they're overextended or have already moved a lot. I can't choose, unfortunately, the time that we have, you know, preferably I would like to, for us to meet that we have this opportunity in front of us, but what can we do? The, the pound, kind of inched downwards, but I wouldn't expect anything now with so close to the news event, but uh, 65, 65, not 159, 65, no, this is 786. Any move up after the news an, uh, announcement, and uh, uh, after maybe a, a twenty-minute stall or quietness after the news event, we could uh, then see then technical trading would restart, and uh, this could be a resistance if it were to move up during the news event. This is gold. Uh, gold is right at the bottom of a wedge, maybe. Very, uh, very unpleasant to trade at the moment. It would be a lot better if we break above here to continue to uh, to 14.30 and 15.20. That would be an interesting trade. Or if we do break below 15.20, well then this is more bearish than I thought. This hook back, I was thinking that this is probably most likely going to be like this, a three-wave correction. But it could also be something like this, in fact. So that's why I keep an eye on those two trend lines are, for me, uh, the most important information. We were taking a look last time on Thursday and saying that this looks bearish and we have a, a continuation to the downside. That's, that, is, that has happened. So I'm not sure if anyone caught that trade, but that was a good uh, 40 pip fall. And we were saying that this is a potential bouncing area because of potential inverse head and shoulders. So that's still valid. And we're right at the support line as well. So we can see a bounce here. We have to be careful of that. Keeping an eye maybe up the break of these tops maybe around 1290 could indicate that potential to reverse back up. Other than that, if we keep inching forward, we'll be breaking this trend, in fact, but there's not much space to 1250. And that's that horizontal support. After that horizontal support breaks, then we'll have more space down to 1980. So shorting, most interesting you know, upon the break of 12.50 and any bear flag and continuation. Um, or any, you know, definitely downtrends, so I have to be very careful with longs unless we get a clear impulse maybe in the bull flag, for example. That's what I would be thinking. At least a break upon 12.90 to get some confirmation. Or you want to be a bit more of a daredevil and uh, 
try something in here, but you know, be aware of the momentum. There is a lot of momentum to the downside. It could push through support out, but could have that potential. Maybe waiting for one more break. Of a we have divergence, but it's only a single divergence, which is not that much in a 15-minute world. Normally, you, you quickly see double or triple divergence, like the euro odd, which has triple divergence. You could easily expect one more bottom break on gold, which then could be a bouncing spot. Especially on the 15-minute world. So that, that's something we can wait for. It does look like the bottom is going to break because it's moving down pretty fast now, looking at this speed. Let's see how far it could break. Maybe 12.73. Twelve sixty eight, those could be targets. Twelve seventy three maybe <clears throat> could be all actually. There's no divergence on the one hour chart. That's interesting though. Could could spell a lot of bearishness in fact. So you never know. Bounce at 1273. Maybe we see this this fly up to 1295. See a small correction and then move up again to 1320. And that was actually the, the turning spot. So that's always difficult to tell. Uh, if if we we stop at 1273 and make a bear flag, well, obviously then this thing is probably going to go lower. <clears throat> so always have to keep an eye on how price action evolves after a target is hit as well. And depending on the chart pattern we see, you know, we can judge, we can judge from there. Let's take a look at pound yen. Wow, pound yen is really pushing. Pound yen is right at a uh, trend line, which is of major importance because that's. The, that's the last resistance out there. After this breaks, there's no resistance anymore unless you go to a weekly chart because this is, if you look at the daily, this is hanging above the broken top. If that trend line gets broken, then that's just a continuation of this impulse. So that could be significant. It will be, have to be the yen, of course, pushing this pound yen, because um, the pound itself is not necessarily <clears throat> that strong or weak. It's primarily the yen that uh, would would be pushing this one. So we have to take a look at the dollar yen as well to keep see if that keeps that bullishness continuation. But it's right at the top of the trend line. In fact, there's a lot of wicks in here. Here too, if you had a more of a contrarian point of view. Could have been even worth uh, a uh, a reversal trade in here, probably. Like the euro yen is doing as well. Wow, that that really moved down a lot. In fact, fifty three more than I expected. It moved down thirty pips after we we looked at it from here. That's already a pretty good profit for a, for a reversal trade like that, but considering the impulse, maybe we could expect even more now. Personally, I would, if I would be in that reversal trade, I would be not targeting necessarily more than 133.04, oh, but uh, because that's a one-hour support. Well, it depends on your view. If, if if you really, if you think that this upside is just a retracement. For for more for more down, maybe to retest this bottom. Then you still have a lot of pips left. Then you could be aiming for 13150. But I think that <clears throat> that that chance is small. It would be a huge art to wire if you took that 
trade. And it would be uh, 180 pips or so still to the downside, but there is a four hour potential support here. And I think that uh, that's a more realistic profit, take profit. But even right in here already, you can see a potential to bounce, but But that's probably going to be a small bounce. Well, 14 minutes from now, we'll see how this one hour candle closes. But I wouldn't be surprised if we see a small bounce and then still one more fall down to test this 133. And then probably see some upside. And we'll have to see how, how strong that upside is. If we get a good impulse, we'll probably break to the upside. Or we might correct a bit lower as well. That, that, don't think it's... I think the upside is more likely, but you never know. <clears throat> You're in New Zealand getting some bounce. Let's take a look at the Kiwi. The Kiwi does look like an, an impulse, and this is looking like a bull flag. So I wouldn't be surprised if we could make it to the minus 272, but or minus 618, but that would be, I would rather wait for the upside and then short there, or wait for a break of this bottom, because this could definitely be deceiving. It, it's in a downtrend, this could easily fall and continue lower as well. <clears throat> so rather wait for the break or bigger pullback in this case. That's the Kiwi. Um, anything else? Maybe the euro pound quickly. Uh, let's take a look. Well, let me let me clean up the chart first of all. Um, kind of at a decisive moment. In fact, if you if you look at this, this could be potential resistance as well within this one hour uptrend. So it will be interesting to see if we if we break from here, it could be a good short in fact. But if we push through this top and then make a hook back, it could be a good bouncing area from our upside. So it is at a bounce or break spot. Besides the trend line, keep an eye on this 8375. You would want to see 8375 break <clears throat> because uh, the trend line, you know, the difference between the trend line and the 8375 is just a few pips. So you definitely want to see 8375 break, and it could be a stop loss above the one hour high here. And you could target anything up to a one half or two to one R2R or, or even this bottom, maybe. That would be a good short. The upside, I wouldn't take on entry order. I would let it break. Look, see how it looks like. If it retraces slow, then I would wait for the next break. So the downside could be an entry order. The upside, I would want to see price action actually unfold before taking entry because the downside is with the bigger momentum. Obviously, we see this momentum, whereas the uptrend, the uptrend break is just a minor momentum pushing it still. Yeah, it's quite close to the euro dollar. There is some, some difference, though, in the sense that you can see the euro pound is all the way back here, relatively. And it's back to the long-term moving averages. The euro dollar, in fact, is, is below the band. 
and we'll go back to the euro pound. The euro pound is above the band. The band is pointed up, and the price is at the long-term moving averages. Back to the euro dollar. Euro dollar band is flat, but price is underneath it, and it's pretty far from the long-term moving averages. So there are definitely, I know, I know what you mean. There are definitely some similarities. Obviously, it's downside pressure is very similar, but the upside correction has been stronger on the uh, the euro pound than the euro dollar, which means uh, that the euro is stronger against the pound. And it has everything to do, of course, with the fact that the pound dollar is moving, uh, has broken to the downside. So that's my plan on the euro pound. Uh, the kiwi, if it does break, that's a good question. Let's take a look. I always like Fibonacci, so I would put a Fib Fibonacci on this most recent downside right here. The bigger target, you can see we stopped at the minus 618, would be this minus 272 at uh, 80, 80, 97 for the moment, 80, 98. Let's say 81 to make it easy. Let's see also any particular fibs maybe here that we should be aware of. Maybe the 50 at 81.30, maybe. Also, if we then zoom into the one-hour chart, Mm, let's see. One hour chart. That's the four hour swing high, swing low. We can take a look at the one hour chart too and see what the targets would be on this time frame, okay? I'm moving down from one swing high to swing low, just in case you're wondering what the, what I'm, how I'm doing that. And then seeing what, when we hit the next target, I'm moving it down. All right. So this was the last swing high swing low on the on the one hour chart. And we hit the fifty fib as you can see. Hopefully you can see. Let me make that a bit more visually a bit clear, more clear maybe. Or let me get rid of this fib for a moment. One second. Alrighty, there it is, 50 fib. So what would be the target of would be minus 618 for the moment? That could be just a small pause though. 618 at 81.46, and then we probably will see continuation down to 81, which is also this minus 1,000 target. So something like this is probably likely, and then we'll see a bigger bounce probably back to the broken bottom and then see a continuation further down. Something like that I would expect. Now of course that hook back to the broken bottom, that also depends on how price is moving to the upside. <clears throat> if it's moving too impulsively, be careful. If it's looking uh, like a bull flag or bear flag or a triangle or something, the chart pattern that makes sense, then that likely increases as well, of course. Once we uh, once we've broken once we've broken a hook back off the minus six eighteen to the minus two seven two, maybe something like that, we could then continue to the minus six eighteen at uh, seventy nine seventy five. <clears throat> I think we've covered almost all of it. I think only the dollar Swiss is left. Dollar Swiss just hasn't done much, in fact. Yes, we did get a break through the monthly high of 91.80. We got to hook back and continue. It hasn't gone that far yet, as yet. <clears throat> a dollar CAD did break up above this trend line that we had. Uh, let's see.
that too is a good break in fact surprisingly during the Asian session we didn't expect the four dollar cat but uh, broke the first two hours of Asia okay well kind of funny but um, of course it hasn't moved much it's the dollar cat this moves if it moves 20 pips is a lot and that's what it has done in fact 20 pips but still looks like a massive breakout uh, yeah we could take a look at pound cat sure The dollar cat, though, let me just finish, is is a breakout that already has happened. But uh, what would make sense is waiting for a pullback, probably. Because now that we've broken this top with this push up here on Friday last week, end of last week, and now getting again a break, the likelihood of going to the at least the next target at 105.50, if not all the way to the minus 618 at 106, you know, this is increasing. So it's definitely a, a, probably a very, very good chance, in fact. So. There's not a lot of pips though on the dollar cat. It's only 55. But so any hook back to this band uh, probably would be a a good bounce. That's the 15 minute band. Best would be even the one hour band, but that's we already had here in fact. So probably hook back to square up this bullish candle anywhere down to 104.87. Any move back to this band could be a good bouncing spot. Probably should not break this low, which is at, uh, let me take a look, which is at 104.82. Uh, and dollar Swissy is, it looks bullish. We are above the monthly resistance. Then again, I would like to see continuation. So preferably, want to see an up, respect, and then break. Pound cat. Uh, just trying to get a feeling for this chart. <clears throat> I didn't look at it uh, yesterday or today, and I kind of lost my sense of sense of uh, direction. Uh, well, looks bullish. I mean, yes, there is some divergence. Maybe I think we talked about that. We did break above the band, hook back to it. Looks like. But you know the confirmation would be really a break of this trend line. In fact, at the moment, this could be a hook back. Yes, that's true. Then again, it could also be a, 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 a maybe a bearish, uh, a bearish uh, move down. Because look, we we use this as support, right? We move up, correct. That's fine. We we move up, can't break. can't find support and then actually start making a lower lows. You see what I mean? We don't use this support for making a higher, like a trend like this. In fact, if you put it like that, we broke out of that. So in that regard, one could wonder if we do get this break. If we do, then that would be a good breakout. But at the moment, <clears throat> it looks like uh, we're actually making lower lows and getting some bearish sentiment which doesn't seem that it has too much space to fall considering there's a green support line right in here. I'll be in the wait and see mode as we actually, I mean, looking at dollar cat, there could be some cat weakness, in fact. <clears throat> Obviously, the pound dollar is moving to the downside, which would make the dollar cat a bit more interesting maybe than the pound cat to the upside. And the pound cat more interesting to the downside than the dollar cat. But considering the cat weakness, I would be careful with this this potential to fall here uh, that's a bit risky I think but 
but going along in here is also a bit unpleasant because of this uh, lower lows, lower highs. Probably a break at least above 106, 167, 56 is needed. And there will be a bit more space to the trend line then. Then we need a break of the trend line. I would personally be on a waiting mode though with this one. Just like odd cat, the odd is having some weakness, so it, even against the cat is moving down. Dollar index is getting the bounce, by the way, off of that monthly support. To the T, we had a monthly support line right at that 78, uh, 90 ish area. It's bouncing off that, obviously. Um, what else? I think we discussed everything except the pound out and pound New Zealand or some exotic, more exotic cross than we than I have on the chart at the moment. So if if yeah, we got still a few minutes left. So if you want to take a look at something specific, let me know once again. Otherwise, I'll just take a look at the euro dollar. And we got a doji last hour. Not really a very convincing uh, bearish signal. Many dojis, in fact. Yeah, I found crude. Yeah, I did. I found. I opened a demo standard uh, account, uh, so we can take a look at that. In fact, but just to finish this euro dollar, though, the basically this downside momentum really didn't get any follow through. Right? That's what we can say. It's just hanging in there. We really want to see the momentum in coming in. A small bear flag, five or fifteen minute world, and then we could see this break. Otherwise, careful because we could see that correction higher. So just wanted to emphasize that. How's the pound dollar doing? It did inch down just a bit more in fact. Not getting the bigger correction I was interested in. Odd USD just hanging in there as as I said it's already extended quite far and it's we got a bit of a break here by two pips and already didn't go anywhere so far so far it could still push through a few pips though I'm not saying but New Zealand is making a move up at the moment how about that year again what's oh it's yeah it's getting a pretty good bounce that's you know we can expect that those kind of things especially in uh, in in uptrends in trends right that's the problem with reversal trades you get price will go against you a lot um, you're in New Zealand. It's kind of bounced here off that level, but not going anywhere. How about gold? Stalling a bit here. Nothing more. All right. Let me take a look now at oil. But I need to log into this one. And now let me open oil. If maybe you can help me. What? How do I find it? In fact, energies, metals. Uh, would you know where it is, Yana? Or anyone else, for that matter? It doesn't matter really. I don't know either, in fact. Yeah, you would say energies, but indeed. I don't know which one it is. This is Q. This is QMV and GU and MU. It doesn't really ring a bell. I mean, I would expect something like CL, like crude light or something like that, or I don't know, but not, not something like GN or MN. MV, I don't know what that is really. Well, I could, let me try it. Let me try one of those. Oh, Iron is saying, cool, is saying QMX3. Would have no idea. I'm glad that uh, R knows this. QMX3. Ah, cool. A weekly chart. 
Let's take a look. Very uh, funky up and down, right? As we, as most of you probably know, the bull run on oil ending uh, summer 2008, when the financial crisis hit, and this thing flew all the way up to 145 and then down again within five years, back to 32. Just a quick recap: 33. Finally finding support. And uh, made a recovery back, and it looks like we got maybe some support right in here. Something like that. Uh, making that upside angle. You can see the moving averages as well. So maybe a move back to that support level around 88, 90 is possible. Now, funny enough, we've never broken this top, in fact. You see that? The top from back in May 2011. So all this, theoretically, all this upside could just be a mere correction still of this downside. And if we do break those green lines, then we could maybe see this fall to, uh, what is it, to 63 which is the target. That is possible. But uh, yeah, we, we respected 886 here as well, as you can see, here too. That is possible. Of course, the opposite is possible as well. But we have to keep an eye on uh, this trend line here. If we break above that, then obviously this is, that would be a bullish signal. If we do break to the upside, then we can probably see and move up to the target at 127, 128. Okay, that's the bigger, bigger picture. Let's take a look at the daily now. Obviously, the daily is showing bearish momentum. We broke out of this upside after a big struggle um, during uh, to July up to September. And then we broke down and using now the band as resistance, in fact. <clears throat> so this is uh, bearish. we're breaking below these bottoms. So that's really pretty impulsive, in fact. That happened just today or yesterday? No. Wait. How come I, oh, this is, this is, uh, oh, but this is only actually the 21st of October. Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know, Arn, but this is not, somehow not the most newest info. This was up to the 21st of October. Somehow. Does anyone know? Do you know why? Any chance of... It's an old futures indeed. I, would, I just wanted to say that I would expect to move up back to uh, this support and move down. Let's see if that's true. We can find out. <laughs> but uh, I would need to find the... Uh, the. I would need to find a new window. Um, <clears throat> let's see. If this is... QMX3, QMX3, what would be the December one then? Would that be, uh, I have no idea. Would that be QMZ3? Let's try. Yeah, it looks so. Cool. We can compare it now. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so I was thinking resistance at 1088. 
And this is 21st October 1600. So let's see if my prediction was accurate or not. 21st of October 1600. That's here. That's where it was breaking. I was saying I would want to see a hook back to what level? To 1088, this broken bottom here. Uh, 888. Now we never got that high, yeah? Well, it's definitely bearishness, but it never got that high. We uh, let me take a look again. We got a small hook back, in fact, here, right there. So we got a bit of a hook back, just, just tad shy, it went up to 1024. But anyhow, I was looking for a hook back, which did happen, and expected downside. So that's funny. <laughs> we can see that that was correct. And we got a pretty big downside, in fact, all the way to 192.60. So I didn't know it, <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I had no idea. So. That's funny. We can, how do we see the result of that analysis, uh, which proved to be true this time? That's good. Um, and we did get the continuation down to, we were looking for a move down to the weekly support. So let's take a look where that was, around 91-ish, up to 93. And it has hit, in the meantime, 93. And 93, obviously, is the long-term moving averages. So that trade worked out well right there. This still could be a bouncing spot, though. We had a doji last week, but looking at the smaller time frames, like the, I mean, small the daily, four-hour, looks more like a bear flag. So in fact, if we were to break this correction here, <coughs> this triangle, probably could expect more downside. But you can see here too the band very nicely, right? We were using it as resistance here, up every time we moved up to resistance and broke, hook back, broke, hook back, continued, smaller hook back to the band, now too. So looking very bearish. And a break of that triangle could could you know could see a continuation down to 91. I would be careful of the 91 zone, as I said, 91, anything in here could still be support. You should be careful of that. Well, actually, we're, we're right at support now, so you know, this is a bouncing spot, but we could easily bounce a bit lower as well and make one more fall. Just like here, and here, and here. So that's definitely possible. <clears throat> for you, for those of you who are wondering why I expected the downside when I saw this break, was because if you look at the daily chart, you can see we were pushing through the lot to moving averages. So I expected. Although the push through looks like a great break, normally speaking, we hook back to that long to move average before we continue. So that's why. The band was pointed down, and we're pushing through the long term support. So that's why it was one of the reasons why I expected bearishness. Of course, also the long term picture uh, indicating there was space to those support trend lines. Ah, cool. Well, we had a we had a look at uh, gold uh, oil, sorry, for the first time, so we can keep an eye on it as well. Uh, at the moment, let me do a quick recap. I don't really see anything interesting. I would definitely keep an eye, a close eye on the dollar yen, for any of these uh, consolidations like that. And uh, 
keep an eye on the news announcements, see what happens with the pound, or oh, the pound move actually lower in the meantime. And it has moved so low that there's actually not much space left towards the support. So I would have to either wait for a bigger hook back, which could still be a good, in, uh, good resistance, or a break of this bottom. One of the two. Euro dollar <clears throat> is moving down. Let's see if we push to the trend line and get a bear flag. Could be a good break, as I said. And what else? Otherwise, I would be waiting a bit more for corrections. Those others seem to overextended on the lower time frames. Let's see. Anything else? Dollar cat. Dollar cat could be a good hook back. Dollar cat could be a hook back. And other than that. How did that? I don't know. Oh, yeah, the kiwi. Kiwi. If it does move higher, that could be a good short still. Yeah. So those are the things I think are on my watch list at the moment. How does euro yen? Euro yen indeed got to hook back and find rejection. It's, as I said, it most likely will make us bounce, but should get some rejection. Let's let's see how far that can go. How? Yeah, we already talked about that already. In fact, one thirty-three. So that wraps it up for today, folks. Um, the auto charges, I didn't have time to look at it. I'll be honest with you. Um, I just totally, <laughs> no chance, unfortunately. Um, so I would have to keep my, you know, I couldn't be able to, to give you my opinion because I, I didn't have time to form it. Unfortunately, um, so I hope the sound is, is good. Anyhow, I will be closing it soon. Um, but I'll let you know once I do know. If I think the pro traders, the platform to have for the better spread, yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, it depends, of course, on how much trading capital you can bring in. There is a minimum. I think it's thousand um, for the for the pro. So. That's something you you need to consider then, okay? But I'll let you know about your other charters. To, you know, once once I have time, uh, I'm afraid that the, the next few weeks I'm a bit tied up. But uh, I hope December, uh, or I can ask someone. I could ask Nenet, for example, if, if he's ever used it. You can ask him on Thursday, okay? If you remind me on Thursday uh, when we have the educational webinar in the evening, then uh, maybe we can get his opinion. At least that. So, thanks everyone for uh, for for being here and um, for for tuning in and listening and um, get all the questions and, and feedback. And um, so hopefully, see you next next uh, next week. Hopefully, see you tomorrow. Cheers.